Hey, it's Ben with Bottomless Inkwell. I am talking today about uh, sobriety in the context of art making especially, but also just a little bit of uh, a chat about sobriety in general. <laughs> um, so it's been over six months since I've had any alcoholic drinks. I do still occasionally have NA beers, um, you know, 0.5 or less or zero zeros, uh, which some people would consider verboten. You know, if, if you're if your drinking is so severe that uh, you wouldn't even mess with it, I totally respect that. I have friends who tell me that too, and they seem to respect that they don't mind that I have those uh, NA beers or whatever. So it's a point that matters if it's something that you've looked at before. Um, but in the context of art making, which is uh, you know what this channel is all about, or mainly about. Um, what I like about not drinking is that it, it plain and simple, it gives me um, a little bit more impetus and a little bit more strength in getting my artwork made and getting the marketing done um, and, you know, exploratory research, that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, on Family Guy, there's this reference one time, he's referencing some jazz musician, maybe Miles Davis or something, and was, some jazz musician who had a heroin problem and he, he was, the quote he said was, no junk, no soul, you know, and I know that that is sort of a recurring theme in all the arts you know, especially with musicians, I would say, but definitely with um, fine artists too, you know, I, there's some sort of correlation that people make where they think you need to be uh, hopped up on goofballs, like they say in The Simpsons. <laughs> there it is, my, my Simpsons and my Family Guy references. Oh, it's been a good morning. I've already hit them both. But you don't have to be hopped up on goofballs, uh, you know, to make excellent artwork. You, it, you can do it sober. Um, that said, I do still, you know, I will take over the counter medicines, natural medicines. Uh, I do still occasionally drink coffee, still battling out nicotine. And I found uh, um, some help with these sugar packets that are available now. You know, they have gums, but sugar packets, uh, for whatever reason, are, are a little bit more moderately priced. And, and that goes uh, also for against comparing, you know, medications definitely comparing against cigarettes. So, um, there's that. I, I recommend them. Uh, you do have to watch, wash, watch your teeth, at least rinse out your mouth with water a little bit more because, uh, they're super sugary. So, um, but yeah, sobriety has been very good to me and feels great. And I don't really think I have a problem even with alcohol, a little bit of a problem. You know, I I'm kind of a truth teller <laughs> in general, it's a big part of my personality, and I think alcohol amplifies that. And I think alcohol also, me, also makes me very vulnerable to toxic people. So um, manipulative people, narcissists, that sort of thing. Um, and so that's my problem with alcohol. My problem is I let my guard down too much, and I get attacked, and my family gets attacked, and and I uh, can't take it anymore. It, it hurts too much, and it hurts my, my family, and I just can't tolerate that. So... Um, I do miss uh, some excellent wines. Um, I'm a big fan of the Altare Barolos of uh, Northern Italy. And um, I, I'm sure I will still have a teaspoon of fine Barolo <laughs> at some point. But my goal is a year. I'm a little over six months. And so I want to go a year. Um, I heard this, this very poetic way of putting it. And it's that you should really, if you think a substance has control of your life, a good goal or target or whatever you want to call it, is to make it a whole year without because really you go through the cycles of everything as you go around the planet one time, right? I mean, every sort of holiday, every sort of event, every sort of pressure situation. So another friend of mine says, don't give advice about it. And I respect that too. Um, I feel a little more comfortable giving advice about alcohol, actually. I don't feel so comfortable giving advice about tobacco and nicotine because that has been a bigger challenge for me, honestly. Um, and that's as candid as I can be about it. <laughs> and the thing of it is, is when you give advice, it messes with your strategy and your strength and everything that's working for your sobriety or for whatever it is that you're trying to um, uh, quit, you know? So, so I think that's the point of not giving advice on that realm. But as far as art making too, um, you know, I, it helps you be more productive. It's really all it comes down to. 
Now, um, I, I watched a movie recently called The Last Shaman, which I thought was excellent. And it, and it, um, it speaks to a couple of different points. It speaks to the dark side of capitalism, which capitalism has both things. You know, there's benefits and there's very predatory things involved that are very damaging. It's not a perfect system by any means. Um, sort of, it talks about that subject. And it also talks about how there's been a big failure of pharmaceuticals and psychological pharmaceuticals, especially in addressing a lot of people's psychological needs. And so they dig into um, the benefits of ayahuasca and um, and it also kind of you know brings up philosophical debate about um, the benefits of a rigid system in the West for addressing a flowing, you know, a more fluid problem of uh, mental health issues. Uh, which people have success with more organic and more natural products a lot of times, um, you know, that have been around for thousands of years as opposed to something that was invented last year that's making somebody millions of dollars that they'll get a, a, a sharp tongue salesman to tell you how amazing it is. You know? So there's, of course, benefits to both systems, and I'm not disparaging either of them. Um, but yeah, Last Shaman, Shaman was, was was worth watching. I thought it was a, it was a good documentary. And it, it, it basically depicts the guy saving his own life. You know, he's suicidal and he uh, goes to, um, where does he go to? He goes to Peru in hunt of an authentic ayahuasca experience. So, uh, but <laughs> back to sobriety. So it's been no booze, been feeling really good. I feel a little bit, I'm kind of lucky because I can drink these N.A. beers and I don't feel like, oh, my God, now i got to get some bourbon. You know, I mean, I miss bourbon. I miss Optimator. I miss uh, excellent, deep, bold red wines, you know, dry wines. Um, but I don't miss them that much. Like when I weigh out the two things, I'm like, mm, yeah, it tastes good. Kind of fun to get drunk once in a while or stay organized, stay more upbeat, especially in these times that are really trying for us. Um, you know, I want to be lucid. There's some big decisions that I have to make and I got to be on top of my game and alcohol is a problem with that. I mean, alcohol is a problem with anybody who is drinking, you know? And so, um, it's something that's worth thinking about. I, I think that there's a lot of myths out there and there's a lot of marketing, um, lies is what it comes down to. It's just, it's just some, just some lies. It almost makes me want to swear. I get it when thinking about it, but I'm trying a little harder not to swear so much and trying to reserve that for moments that really deserve it instead of being, you know, too decadent about my language and swearing all the time. But, um, yeah, so the, you know, you hear the, you hear the, like the converse, this conversation about, um, well, I just have one a day or, you know, I just have a few a week and, and whatever it is, and of course, people who they earn their their living from alcohol, they want you to believe all those things. And um, it, what it comes down to for me is whether you're damaging other people mainly and damaging yourself I, and, and being truthful. And the thing about uh, with yourself, if you're really damaging somebody and the thing about alcohol is it desensitizes you to noticing things. <laughs> so, I, 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 there's a lot of people that I consider alcoholics. Everybody, it's a very hot topic word or, you know, a touchy word to use. But um, there are people that I consider alcoholics and I don't consider myself an alcoholic. Um, but, and the main reason for that is um, because I can put it down, it's no big deal. Uh, to me, the, the, the word alcoholic is somebody who has a lot of trouble putting it down. Um, but see, the, it, even that word, it's used in such a disparaging way, almost to attack people. And I think a lot of times it's used by people who a lot of times produce alcohol or by people who are alcoholics who don't really care that they're hurting people is really what it comes down to. So um, that word is used like a knife. You know, it's used like a weapon. It's a weaponized word. So um, I'm really careful with it. I don't even like talking about the word alcoholic, to be honest. <laughs> people freak out about it. But, it, you know, weapons are tools, right? I mean, it, in, you can use that word and sometimes it'll wake somebody up somebody who's really been hurting people. Um, and you know, and maybe it'll do it. Maybe that's what it takes. I don't know. I, if there was, you know, there's notice there's no word called nicotine holic, you know, or whatever nicotinated holic. There isn't anything like that. If there was, that's what I, that's what I would be. But you know, everybody's 
I, I, everybody's an addict for something. There's addicts for religion. There's addicts for politics. Um, there's, you know, when you're basically when you're hurting yourself and you're hurting other people because of a substance or an ethos or a philosophy, you're an addict for that thing. So anyway, boy, I'm on my soapbox today and I've hardly even talked about artwork. I did hear back from one of the northern Italian wineries uh, that I was trying to um, communicate with about building one of my sculptures and they don't have an art program yet, but they're going to, it sounds like they're, they're going to keep in touch with me and I'm still reaching out. I'm still trying to find people to help me build these chimney swift um, bird uh, chimney sculptures to, to help the chimney swift bird that's in decline. So I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to, I'm not giving up. It's hard though. Ooh, man. I've got so many other things that I'm doing to try and keep afloat, but um, I'm not giving up. So uh, yeah, I, I think I've rambled on enough about art and sobriety and all that good stuff. Um, I wish you luck if you're on that path and you know, there are people that can help you um, do that sort of thing. And I am uh, taking appointments um, for Zoom meetings if you wanna talk about anything creative. If you're stuck, if you're having a creative block in any sort of regard, not just in art, but in life, um, it is something that I, just to be very frank, I've, I've had good luck with talking to people about their problems is really what it is. I, am I an expert on psychology? Absolutely not. Seek out a psychologist or a therapist or at least a life coach. Um, but if you're somebody who your psychology is good and you just have a certain issue with being interesting or creative or, um, you know, you feel like you're almost to a certain level with something you're trying and you can't quite get to where you want to be, you're the person that I'd like to, to speak with. Maybe maybe we can hash some things out. So uh, I mean it in the most genuine way, you know, um, and uh, I'm looking for clients. So if you're somebody who wants to do that, yeah, reach out to me here and we can schedule a Zoom meeting. Um, and that's all I have. I don't think I have anything else I want to say about sobriety at this time. Next video is going to be about artwork. I'm going to make some artwork. I do have some paintings that I, I've been, uh, I'm like halfway done. So I'm going to get some, some uh, video capture of that too. So, all right, everybody have a lovely day.